Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the newest iPhone. It's a couple months later, and this is the review. So believe it or not, this phone is about four months old already, which means a lot of you considering buying one have already made up your mind on that, but you definitely learn a lot from using a phone for a longer period of time. Four months isn't even that long, it's just longer than I usually take to review things. But for me, at least, you know, with four months, you know, this the honeymoon period is over, it's not brand new and shiny anymore, you got your fingerprints on it, you got your scratches on it, you've used it every day, and you really get to know it best. So first and foremost, even though this is the iPhone 7, even though this is supposed to be the bigger step forward in the TikTok of Apple releases, 6, 6s, 7, 7s, this is still definitely a very familiar and very incremental upgrade to the previous iPhone again. It's a familiar iPhone. Same rectangle with the rounded corners for the design, same big forehead and chin with the home button, same seamless unibody metal industrial design again, and same scrolling pages of icons for iOS. So at its core, it's super easy to get used to, especially when you're coming from another iPhone just to pick up an iPhone 7. But that being said, there are plenty of little things and plenty of refinements that all add up to make a much better phone than you had last year. So on the outside, the improvements are more minor. You know, a little design tweak from last year. The antenna bands are gone and the back looks a little bit cleaner. But it's definitely still an iPhone, there's no mistaking that. So if you want to mess with the design a little bit more, you can maybe put a skin on it like I showed in my daily driver video. But this design, as stale as it may seem, is iconic and very familiar. So we still have some of the biggest bezels in any smartphone. That is a bit annoying when you have the white bezels. Uh, but that's so you can still have this home button for at least one more year. And speaking of the home button, it's now not a physical button anymore, but it's more of like a force touch trackpad. It doesn't actually move, it's just a still piece of glass but it's pressure sensitive. So when you press it, it works and the Taptic motor makes a click and it makes it feel like you're pressing a button. And it's really convincing, I'd say. It's really easy to get used to. It used to be weird when you're like pushing it on a cable and you know, it doesn't really work with gloves, but I'm 100% used to it now. I'm actually totally cool with this home button. I should also mention, I think Touch ID is at the holy grail where it's like a no brainer whether you should use it or not. You set it up once, right when you get your phone, and it's faster and more secure than typing in a password every single time. So I like Touch ID a lot. Anyway, aside from just the home button, this is the second generation of the iPhone with 3D Touch, but I don't really use it that much. I mean, it's definitely built into more apps and there are shortcuts on the home screens and even in the apps themselves, but uh, yeah, I just don't really use it that much. Uh, one thing I do have to say though is something the iPhone doesn't get enough credit for. The iPhone has the best vibration motor in any smartphone, period. And I'm talking about the Taptic Engine. Like this phone literally feels like it's tapping you on the wrist or in your pocket or in your hand when you get a notification. It's awesome, so I love the Taptic Engine. It's really good. And Apple clearly knows this because they're using it in way more parts of iOS animations now. So like the notification shade bouncing off the bottom of the screen, that type of thing, or control center bouncing up, or really just any bouncing anywhere in iOS. It always clicks so the phone feels like it's bouncing. Anyway, one of the biggest changes uh, on the outside is it's now officially a waterproof phone. So the iPhone 7 is IP67 rated, which means you don't have to worry about dropping it in or near water anymore, and you can just take underwater photos and videos if you want. Basically, the phone should survive water exposure now. But other than that, you know, the displays on the iPhone 7 are still pretty good. You know, nothing crazy or amazing. Still has great color reproduction. Uh, but the one thing that's killing me, and it's not just me, it's tons of people obviously, about the outside of the phone is the lack of a headphone jack. Basically, Apple is clearly aiming for an entirely portless wireless iPhone in their future. So in that process, they're removing the headphone jack and starting to push wireless audio. Super aggressive? Yes. Uh, super forward thinking? Yes. Uh, super a pain in the ass? Also yes. I mean, I think it's, I'm probably gonna make a whole video on the whole wireless phone thing. Maybe let me know if you'd want that in the comments section. Now, the camera on the iPhone 7 is new too. You can see the different housing. There's a new sensor and new glass. And you might remember from the Smartphone Awards, this camera is already one of the best. It takes great photos and great 4K videos. I think it might get the title of best low light photo camera back. It was kind of close with Samsung, but the image processing from Apple has always been excellent. Autofocus is also extremely fast and daytime photos look pretty damn good too, but it's by far the best video camera in any smartphone. I'll tell you that right now. I'll link below the video I shot entirely on this camera. 
But seriously, the 4K video from this sensor with the optical image stabilization and the big wide open aperture, honestly, sometimes you can't tell the difference from like a real dedicated mirrorless camera's footage. It's that good. Get a little depth of field going. I mean, it's awesome. Everything's there. Now the iPhone 7 Plus has a second camera lens, as you already saw in my daily driver video. One regular camera, same as the smaller phone and one telephoto lens at twice the focal length for that two times optical zoom. And it's really interesting the way it works, but I think it turned out to be one of Apple's coolest products of 2016 last year. Basically, when you're all the way zoomed out, you're not just getting data from the main camera, as you would expect, but it's also actually intelligently using some imagery stitching in from the telephoto camera as well to make it a little bit sharper and a little bit more detailed in the center of the frame. Now, sometimes it uses lots of that data, sometimes none at all. Like if you accidentally cover the telephoto lens with your finger, for example, it doesn't use anything from it. But when you start to zoom in a bit, it continuously, intelligently analyzes how much of the information to stitch in and then you can actually see it completely switch over cameras when you get to 2x zoom. It's subtle, but the tiny changing exposure is there, you can see it. And from what I've seen, it actively does this switching during video recording too. So dual cameras is pretty awesome and it works really well. You can only get it obviously on the bigger iPhone, which is why I guess a lot of people don't get to play with it. But through software updates, stuff like portrait mode is getting better every day. And so it, basically if you're into photography or videography, the iPhone 7 Plus is the phone to get. Now on the inside, basically all you need to know that's changed is the chip. The A10 Fusion chip is fantastic in this phone and I'm pretty comfortable calling this the most responsive phone ever. Like this is something Apple does really well since they control both all the hardware and all the software. So no phone is as smooth and as one-to-one -one responsive to the touch of your finger as a fresh iPhone. I'd say the Google Pixel comes closest right now and then maybe the OnePlus 3T right after that and generally stock Android phones, but the smoothness and high frame rates of animations are the most consistent on the iPhone 7 and that's something I really like and it's something you'll appreciate like every single day you're using the phone. Overall performance is awesome through multitasking and everyday use and gaming and navigation and all kinds of stuff and the battery life to go with that is also about the same as last year, which is to say pretty good but not great. So the iPhone 7 has an okay battery and decent standby time, while the bigger iPhone 7 Plus that I'd recommend has pretty good battery with excellent standby time. Also, fun fact, this year Apple made the iPhone the same dimensions and included a bigger battery instead of making it smaller with the same size battery. Thank you, Apple. Keep doing that, please. I really don't need it to be thinner. But that is pretty much what's good with the new iPhone. Lots of little upsides, lots of little improvements with the hardware on the outside and on the inside. My biggest complaints would be that they went with Lightning over USB Type-C again, although I would totally expect them to keep doing that, and that they went with no headphone jack instead of a headphone jack. Obviously, I can't tell you how many Uber drivers have offered me the aux cable and I have to turn down the jams. So at the end of the day, iPhone 7 has a lot that's new with it, but obviously it's still a very familiar incremental upgrade just like previous iPhones have been. And that's kind of the point. That's why people keep getting iPhones. That's not a bad thing. That's a great reason to buy this phone again, especially if you're coming from a previous gen. But I think that this year you're going to see a lot more big improvements with the 10th generation iPhone or the iPhone 7S or the iPhone X. Whatever they end up calling it, that's the one I'm most excited for. Until then, that's been it. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.